in the process. Um, I know there is a lot of anxiety usually surrounding um, the college essay. So, um, you know, I, I will start off, I have a PowerPoint that I'm going to share in just a second, but I will start off by saying, you know, no one piece of your application usually is a person's downfall. Um, so don't worry, your college essay is not going to make or break um, your ability to, you know, attend college at, at you know, wherever it is you, you choose to go. It's just, you know, really take the time to try to put your best foot forward um, with what you're doing there. But I'm going to share my screen. Um, so basically, you know, I tried to put together just some tips with, you know, what's best for, for the college, you know, essay. Okay. Um, first and foremost, this needs to be the student's authentic voice. Okay. Um, you know, parents, I know, love to read the essays and they're worried, okay, is this is a good thing to write about? Is, you know, do you sound mature enough? Do you sound old enough? And truthfully, the essays that I love to read are the ones that, that sound like a teenager has written them, okay? You know, a teenager has put the time into it to, you know, really polish it off and be, you know, good structure and content. And, you know, truthfully, I love essays that help kind of connect the dots between the other pieces of an application. So this really needs to be the student's voice, okay? Um, it's their essay, it's their application, and it needs to be their authentic voice. Um, it can't be something that's a, you know, a 15 times edited down version of what the original piece was to be, okay? Um, the next thing is, you know, we really want you to tell us what we need to hear about you. Okay, who you are, what you want to do, what your aspirations are, um, your struggles, all of those types of things. Okay. And, you know, what we really want is for you to tell us that. I think too many times, you know, students are worried about, okay, well, what do they, what do they want to, you know, what do they want me to be like? What do they want to hear? All of those things. Okay. And we don't want that. We want you to be you. Okay. So don't tell us what we, you think we, you know, want to hear. Tell us what you need to hear. Okay. Um, the next thing is, is about topics, okay? Um, a lot of times, many of us have people that are really special in our lives that have impacted us in different ways. Maybe it's a, someone in your family, maybe it's a coach, maybe it's a teacher, an advisor, whomever it may be, okay? Um, but, you know, all too often what happens is, is you write a beautiful essay about that person and it doesn't tell us anything about you, okay? So, just be really careful when you're writing those essays about other people and how they've influenced you um, to make sure that we don't want to admit them um, over you because of how amazing you've made them sound. So if you're writing about someone else and their impact on you, you know, I kind of say the general formula is, you know, maybe talk about them for, for a quarter of your essay and then really talk about you and how they've changed you and how they've affected you for maybe three quarters of it. So somewhere around that ratio. Okay. Um, sports essays. So this is always a tough one for me because I have a, a big sports background. I was a college athlete. I wrote a very bad sport essay for my college application. And, and lo and behold, I got into college, um, you know, and, you know, it can be a challenge because all too many times with the sport essays, it's just kind of a recap of a competition and injury or season. So, you know, what we really want to hear is, OK, well, what happened? How did it affect you? How did it change you? What are you doing moving forward? What's your potential? those types of things, okay? As I said earlier, really take the time to proof what you've written and are submitting. Don't wait until the last minute to do it. This is not a time to procrastinate. I know no one really wants to write a college essay, um, but you know, really take the time to do it and sometimes write multiple ones um, and see what, what fits you best, okay? Um, have people read it without telling you what, without you telling them what, you want the reader to take away from it, okay? So I always say it's not as much about the topic that you're writing about. It's more about, you know, when you're going into not just your essay, but your application and what you're trying to really highlight about yourself, okay? And that goes into my next, my next bullet is, you know, we wanna know about potential growth, resiliency, you know, resourcefulness, curiosity, inclusiveness, you know, potential because we're not filling a class, okay? We're building a community, okay? And when you go into that college essay and your application in general, you know, think about, well, I want them to know that I'm a really inclusive person. I want them to know that I can overcome challenges. I want them to know that, um, you know, I really value service or, you know, I really want to study abroad or study this or that. So, you know, go into that knowing what you want to express about yourself, but don't tell the reader because you don't want to shape their opinion ahead of time. And then when they're done reading it, whoever it is you have, you know, read your essay, ask them, 
what does this say about me? What do you think I'm trying to tell the person that's reading it for me? So those are so some essays, uh, essay tips that I have. And then, you know, moving on to the next, um, you know, the next slide, um, I would say, you know, looking at the next slide, you know, the, there's a new supplementary essay that the Common App has created, um, not just for students, but also for guidance counselors that is directly, um, you know, addressing the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, and in our office at Hobart Williams Smith, we're actually expanding that to include a lot of different things because um, as we all know, there's there've been many things, you know, even beyond COVID that have been really challenging and affected a lot of, of people in various ways um, that haven't presented themselves, um, you know, previously. So the new supplementary essay is really addressing that and it's your, you know, space to talk about these things that, that might have really affected, you know, these last few months where you might affect you moving forward. Okay. But please know if you don't have anything to say there, okay. If, if, you know, COVID isn't something and, and other issues that have happened, isn't something that has really affected you in a way that you think that there's something that you should, should express to a college admissions officer, you don't need to put anything there. Okay. You're not going to be marked down because you don't put anything there. So the new supplementary essay, you know, this is where you talk about the events of the last few months and how they've affected you. Okay. Academically, you know, remote learning, it's, it's a challenge, hybrid learning, in-person learning, even with a mask and, and social distancing rules and everything like that, not knowing, okay, am I going to be in person, not in person, not knowing what's happening with the pandemic. Okay. So you can talk about those things, you know, moving to remote learning, if you had a learning difference, um, or, you know, we're struggling in a class, it's much more difficult to get the academic support you needed, you know, in a, um, in a remote learning environment. Okay. Um, there's challenges. Maybe you have a lot of people at home and you couldn't find a quiet place, place to study and do your work. Okay. Maybe you, you couldn't get the emotional support that you needed um, from your friends, from your, your counselors, from your teachers. Okay. You know, how did you challenge yourself during this time? All right. Um, and, and how have you, how did you struggle? Okay. Um, also, you know, plans were obviously changed in a big way. So, you know, you can talk about how certain things that you were looking forward to or that really, um, you know, were important to you uh, were canceled and changed. You can talk about that there. Um, you know, COVID and, and everything that happened also, you know, really provided people with opportunities to support and help others in, in different ways, to lead in different ways. You know, maybe you helped to, um, you know, raise funds and, and, you know, provide food for first responders. Maybe you wrote letters to people that, um, you know, were, were struggling. Uh, maybe you took part in, in marches that happened, you know, whether it's, whether it's social justice marches, whether it's, you know, for election, maybe, maybe you called poll workers, whatever it may be. Okay. Um, you know, did you, did you have new roles and responsibilities within your family? Did you have to get a job to help support, you know, certain things in your family? Um, did you have to take care of younger siblings? Those types of things. Um, for us, like I said, we're expanding that to, to include a lot of different things. You know, on the West Coast, you know, I also work with students on the West Coast. I could hear about the wildfires and how those affected families, okay? Um, so you can talk about a lot of these, these different, um, you know, topics that, that have transpired since, since April and March um, and are still going on and how they've affected you, how they have shaped what you want to do, how they've um, you know, really helped you grow in, in many different ways. Okay. Um, your guidance counselors also have a section um, in their portion of the application in the secondary school report uh, to discuss issues um, related to the last few months. So there's a lot of ways um, to really, you know, express what has been going on. But before I move on to actually reading a real application, um, are there any questions about any of those things that I just went over? Um, feel free to put it in the chat or unmute. Um, if not, I can kind of move on. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to, I'm going to put a pretty picture up so you don't have to stare at my face the whole time. Um, but I'm actually going to read some real college essays, okay? Um, not knowing time-wise how much we have, but I'm going to start with this one, okay? Um, and it's an essay that I love. It's a, a student that has just took off in, in college and, um, you know, has has some really great things that that she's done. but um, I love reading this essay because it tells a lot about this person. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read it. And then I'd love for you in the chat when it's done, you know, put some things in that you think, you know, this essay told us about this person. Okay. So here we go. Um, it happened when I was practically naked. 
just a month prior, I received the keys to the world, or should I say my mom's hand me down station wagon. I was driving myself to swim practice, wearing only a blue bathing suit and my bright pink Crocs with gibbets filling every hole. As I cruised along mountain road, my car came to an immediate stop. This stop was not caused by a stop sign or a red light, but by the car I rear-ended. Thankfully, unhurt, the other driver, my high school principal's assistant, and I pulled over and met each other on the curb. I stood mortified as cars filled with my teammates, their parents and strangers gawked at me as they passed. I quickly realized that on that chilly November afternoon that the rubberneckers were more, cause, were more focused on my outfit that would instantly fail the school dress code rather than on the accident. With this awareness, my cheeks turned the color of my tacky shoes and my stomach dropped faster than the screamed tower at Six Flags. My bathing suit was now wet, not from chlorine, not from what you're probably thinking, but from tears that rolled down my face. Thoughts ran through my head. How could I have caused an accident? Will my parents allow me to drive again? After what felt like years, the police officer arrived at the scene. So you're a swimmer, I see. He sneered as he glanced up and down at my scantily clad attire. Turning his judgment of me to the accident, he issued me a ticket, 15 hours of community service. I thanked the officer profusely, mostly because I could finally retreat to the sanctuary of my car rather than remain exposed for all to see. Throughout practice, my thoughts returned to the embarrassment I felt because of my lack of appropriate dress. I became keenly aware that I was not the only person ever to experience humiliation because of one's attire, but in my situation, I had a choice. In that instance, I was forever changed. My community service punishment was now motivation to make a difference in the lives of others who needed clothing. My lapse of practice became faster as my adrenaline surged with the notion that I had the power to help eradicate feelings of shame in someone else. As my heart pumped with excitement, I drove home, more cautiously than ever, and began my search of charitable causes. I was thrilled to discover, to discover Terrace Closet, a project that provides free clothing for those in need in the greater Hartford community. Just hours earlier, I was feeling shameful and dismayed, and now I was determined and grateful for the opportunity to provide community service for such an impactful cause. I began as a clothing sorter in a room where every crevice was filled with bags and of donated clothes, a task that I was told would take at least five hours. After a few weeks, I developed a system that became very efficient at my sorting job. I even was asked to train new volunteers. My team and I were able to get that tedious job done in only two hours with my new sorting method. I watched the glow of gratitude on the community members' faces while they exited Tara's closet. And with their new wardrobe, the recipients of the proper job interview clothing no longer had to worry about a potential employer judging their current income situation by what they were wearing. The kindergartner with the light, light up sneakers could now dress the same as her classmates. This experience instilled in me a passion for volunteerism and aiding those in need. My failed drive that day was a catalyst for other change. I no longer drive to the pool only wearing my bathing suit and Crocs. Now I at least wear a t-shirt and pattern socks too. So what does everybody think of that? I would love to hear, just if you put it in the chat, um, what, what do you think that person was trying to tell us about herself in terms of, of you know, qualitative things, like characteristics about her as a person? Tanya Thibodeau is going to give a full scholarship to whatever school you want if you start putting some stuff in the chat. <laughs> right, Tanya? Sure. <laughs> if I could, I would. <laughs> Well, I don't know if we're going to have any takers on that. So you guys are lucky it's on virtual. Usually if we're in person, I would pick on you. Right. Um, <laughs> but I will not put you on the, on the, um, um, uh, thank you, Gabriel. I appreciate that. Um, so yes, it, it, it displays how she turned a negative event into motivation. Completely true. Anybody else? There isn't any wrong answer here. The one thing that all of you need to understand is I read an essay and I'm going to think one thing about it. And then, you know, Ms. Thibodeau is going to read the essay and she's going to think something completely different. Gabriel, you might interpret things differently. So it's not about if I like the essay or I don't like the essay. It's about, did they do a good job conveying who they are to the reader? Okay. So, you know, since we're not getting any more uh, winners in the chat, I think what we need to know about this essay is, you know, this person is someone who has just absolutely taken off in college. Um, still a little crazy. Um, so I have another, I have another one. It says she's most likely trying to show that she has a kind personality and how she decided to make a change. Yep. This is a student I know really well. So basically, um, this person, uh, when I read the essay, I kind of think, okay, this person's a little all over the place. 
um, maybe a little disorganized, throwing things together at the last minute, that type of thing. Um, I agree with the, you know, Matthew that you said, you know, she's a kind person. She is a very kind person. Okay. And wants to help people. Um, yeah. And it's turning a negative event into a positive. I'm a big person for, you know, how do you approach it? Is it, is it glass half full or, or glass half empty? Okay. Um, and tone of your essay is really important. You know, you don't want to come off as a victim. You want to come off as someone that, you know, okay, if you're facing tough situations or things don't go your way, how do you overcome them? What are you going to do? Because there are a lot of things that aren't going to go your way in college and beyond. And it's how you react to them and how you work with people that are really important. So with this, this essay, it's really interesting because, um, you know, she actually is a, a writing and rhetoric major. She actually um, had an internship at Standards and Poor's writing, doing technical writing for them. Um, she was a finalist for an internship at Forbes this summer before the world shut down. So this is a person who was an average student in high school, and now she is completely doing something different. Um, what I took away from it is, is like, okay, you know, she doesn't want to just go through the motions. She wants to make the most of the opportunities that she has, and she wants to help the team be more efficient. She wants to lead when she, she needs to lead, but she can be a follower. So when I say that, I'm alluding to, you know, what she did about going to the closet, you know, and or organizing the closet and the clothes donations and making it more efficient. And, you know, having that heart of, okay, you know, not everybody has the opportunity to have the same types of clothes that she might have or her family or friends. And it's working to gain access for those people so they can have a better opportunity, better life. Um, you know, you could tell by how all over the place she was, you know, she has a, she has a learning difference. Um, she has ADD and, you know, can, you can tell with, you know, hopping in the car and just her bathing suit and, and Crocs, you know, probably wasn't planning the best. Okay. And, and, you know, that change, she, she could see her maturing. You can see her taking accountability as well. That's a big thing. She didn't blame anybody else for the accident. She didn't blame anybody else. And, you know, I can't believe I got community service. Okay. It was taking responsibility. It was being able to work well in groups. It was, um, you know, as, as you said, Gabriel, it's turning a, a negative into a positive to motivate her to do something else. So, um, you know, this, this essay helped connect the dots with certain things that I saw in other aspects um, of, you know, what she, what she put in, um, in her application in terms of her activities, in terms of what her letters of recommendation said. So it, it helped me connect the dots and reinforce some things that, you know, I was already, already hearing um, about her. So, um, you know, I think that's what you need to, uh, what you need to do and need to look at um, when you're, when you're thinking about writing an essay. It's how do these dots connect, okay? Um, I see that we do have a question that I will answer at the end, just so you know. Um, but I, I'm going to read one more essay for you, um, a different topic. Um, a lot of you might want to write about a community service experience. So here's another one. OK, and this is from a person who graduated a couple of years ago um, from Westchester. Uh, it has become almost cliche for American teens blessed with good fortune to travel far away places in order to expose themselves to the struggles of those less fortunate. Whether they be side trips from family vacations or summer community service missions, it seems to everyone that everyone returns from these experiences with newfound appreciation for all they have, having seen firsthand those with little material possessions, words like heartbreaking or sad, consistently describe their experiences. I've taken two of those trips myself, one in 2012 to an orphanage outside of Nairobi during a family visit to East Africa, and another in 2013 on a community service trip to Quito, Ecuador. However, as I reflect on these experiences, I had a very different response than what I often hear about others. I did not find people I visited or their circumstances to be heartbreaking. In communities with no Apple stores or Starbucks, and in some cases, children with no families, I found smiling faces that inspired me to challenge my pre preconceived notions of what it means to be privileged. Prior to arriving at the children's shelter on the outskirts of Nairobi, I was prepared to sweep in with my goodie bags of candy and crayons brightening the days of malnourished children. It only took me a few minutes to realize that vision definitely came straight out of dramatized Save the Children commercial because of the reality I witnessed was far different. We were greeted by smiling faces of boys and girls who were proud to show us how clean their rooms were and the garden they had planted, which would feed them. In Ecuador, I had a similar experience. Sitting at a lunch table with eight-year-old Miguel, I handed him my iPhone, expecting he wouldn't want to return it. Surprisingly, though, he offered it right back, showing a lack of interest in something that I had ignorantly thought would change his world. He then took my hand, leading me to a bookshelf in one of his classrooms, anxious to share his reading with me. 
Rather than coming home with a renewed gratitude for what I had, what I have and others may not, I instead started to ask myself, maybe there's something these people have that I don't. As a result, I have made a conscious effort to be more aware of not just what truly makes me happy, but also how I can help the lives of others, regardless of their escape or their privileged or underprivileged status. For example, I have a close friend who has everything materially she could possibly want, but lacks the love and support of her parents who constantly make her feel inadequate resulting in low self-esteem and severe eating disorder. I have been a major source of support for her, which has helped me realize that just as you don't have to be rich to be happy, you don't have to be poor to be needy. Challenging our notion of privilege has made me ha a happier person. I've continued my community service, providing much needed services to a local underserved community, but I have also come to realize that my ability to be a positive influence on the people around me is much greater than that. It doesn't just mean fulfilling community service hours or even serving those less fortunate. By trying to understand what made the people of Quito and Nairobi so inspiring to me, even though they seem to have so little, I realize that I even enrich my own life and the lives of others by being a good friend, a good leader, and a positive force in my community, wherever I am and without care for my old definitions of happiness and privilege. So what are, what are people's thoughts on that essay? Does anybody, anybody have any thoughts on that one? If you wanna put it in the chat. And we got about five minutes left too. Okay, sounds good. So what really struck me about this essay um, was basically, you know, this student did come from a lot of privilege, okay? It is the first college essay about a community service trip and I've gotten a lot of essays about community service trips, okay? And, and you know, not to say you shouldn't write about them because a lot of them have influenced in a lot of ways but it's the first person that really described understanding privilege in a way that she did of, you know, understanding that, you know, what we think of as privileged isn't necessarily what other people think of as privileged. Okay. And it also demonstrates me a sense of inclusivity with this person that, you know, she wanted to learn about others around her. She wasn't scared to be in uncomfortable situations where she's around people that are very different than her. Okay, but she also had the sense of knowing, okay, affluence and, and things, you know, material things don't equal being privileged, okay, because, you know, referencing her friend was struggling, you know, having a family, having everything that, that people think, you know, would make you privileged, yet she was in the same situation, um, you know, that, that, you know, no one would ever want to be in with low self-esteem, you know, lack of family support, things like that. Um, you know, it connected the dots with things that the student did in terms of volunteer. It, it connected the dots with, you know, wanting to go above and beyond, wanting to not just go through the motions, um, just like that other student of, of, you know, really having a sense of this is what's different in, in life and, and this is what the impact I want to have. Um, so it gave me a glimpse of, you know, the impact that she might have on a college campus. Um, it gave me the insight into her being very curious about difference in others and also being open-minded enough to change her point of view if something goes out there to change it. So that's kind of what I really enjoyed about that essay. It's still to this day one of my favorites. Um, it was her voice. Both of those essays were the voice of that person. I always say one of my favorite essays was a student talking about how their freckles, um, this is a student from Horace Greeley actually, talked about how their freckles describe their personality. And I remember I loved the first paragraph because it said, you know, my, I'm covered in freckles and little Jimmy used to make fun of me um, all the time about it. And I never should have listened to him because he picked his nose. Literally, that's what it said. And it was just funny. I had another student talking about, you know, culture through, you know, he said, my dad once told me, if you want to learn about culture, eat someone's food. Um, and it was just a story about this, this student's eating, you know, from a kebab stand in London to pizza in Brooklyn um, and talking about the people that serve it. So it was really kind of you know, giving insight into who that person is. So, um, but that's all I have. So questions, I know I have one sent to me privately. Um, for the COVID supplementary essay, should we talk about multiple things that happened or just one? Um, you know, this person's trying to make a mistake that they made into an opportunity. You can talk about as many things as you want on that. It doesn't, it shouldn't be, you know, 15 pages long. It should be concise, but you should write about anything that has had an impact on you that you think is important for us to know um, about you personally or how it's affected your family, so on and so forth. So you don't have to limit it to one thing.